one 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 two three here. Is it okay? Yeah, I'm shouting anyways. So you'll hear me anyway. Yeah. I would have a couple. After, after, if you don't mind. Because I have, I have to be there, but I don't want to take this away. Okay, thank you, thank you for introduction. So, um, I represent the identity management team here and I will be talking about our involvement in different other projects. Uh, but before we do that, I need to set up uh, sort of terminology and just make sure that we are talking about the same things. So, free IPA, everybody is familiar with free IPA? Is there anyone who doesn't know what free IPA is? Okay, free IPA is a central server that provides authentication and identity, manage, identity management capabilities, uh, serves identities, serves uh, PKI keys, distributes the Kerberos keys, so provides a central management for your Unix Linux infrastructure. Uh, SSSD, everybody, anybody doesn't know what SSSD is? Okay. SSSD, System Security Services Daemon, it's the client-side component, which is a part of the uh, operating system. It's actually a part of many Linux distributions, I think all of them now, and it provides a, a way of uh, connecting the system into the central identity management system, being free IPA, or being Active Directory, or being just a lab and Kerberos, so it supports multiple different configurations. So uh, with combination of SSD and free IPA, we can provide the centralized identity management for the Linux infrastructure. And that's what we have been building and it works. So at some point we were asked, well, what is the value of that for not only just the management of the systems, but also for the stacks, software stacks that we uh, work with, that we are interested in, uh, and uh, things like OpenStack, OpenShift, and so on. So we got involved, and the goal was to assess what um, application stacks do, applications and stacks do regarding authentication, identity lookups, uh, identity provisioning, uh, key distribution, certificate distribution, and provide recommendations to other projects on uh, what 
how to integrate, how to get the keys, how to set up security, and uh, make sure that everything works uh, smoothly without any overhead for the administrators who are deploying those stacks. So, uh, and also we wanted to look at providing unified um, user experience, not only administrator experience, but the uh, authentication experience for the user accessing different applications uh, that uh, constitute his management, in infrastructure management tool set. And that when he authenticates against one application and then goes to another application, the expectations and workflows and UI related to authentication is similar so that there are no surprises. So we looked at uh, different projects. Uh, it's not the all-inclusive list, but at many of them. And we came with uh, some patterns because uh, it seemed that uh, there are three things that are repeating again, again, and again with every, pretty much every single stack. One thing that every application needs user authentication and identity lookup. So uh, there is a common theme. Every, every single application needs to solve this problem. And we'll talk about how, how it is solved and how we can solve and how to solve this problem. Then um, internal security of the stack. Uh, how the underlying plumbing of the stack is secure. Because we know that uh, perimeter security is not is not an option. So the, the security needs to follow data and needs to live together with the data. And then uh, automatic provisioning of the systems. The systems, uh, what we noticed is that in many cases, uh, the application is doing some sort of creation of another system, whether it is bare metal or it is virtual machine, it is created for some purpose, whether it is a part of the infrastructure itself or it is a part or a payload that is launched on user behalf. There is some kind of uh, provisioning of the systems and those systems need to be also integrated into the same identity management namespace. They need to be bootstrapped. The identity needs to be assigned to them so that they can securely connect to the central server fetch uh, the information that is needed and, uh, and the keys and uh, be a part of the infrastructure and enforce some of the policies when this node is accessed, but also provide capa capabilities, security capabilities for the services running on the node. So we will start with the second one. Um, so I put together a diagram which doesn't represent any particular project. It's just an example, an abstract, to show pretty much how all those projects look like if you start to decompose it in, into the pieces. So don't, don't judge it, it's not a real system. But the point is that there are multiple remote connections between different components inside the stack itself, and all these connections need to be secured so you need to provide the capability of one component to authenticate to another component. So you need to give, assign them identity, you need to provision the keys, you need to configure those components to know that they are now are supposed to use either Kerberos or SSL, so all that needs to be done. And there is currently a lot of hand waving. It's like the, the code is there, uh, but it's up to the administrator to set it up. The keys are provisioned in some way. Nobody cares how they're provisioned. Well, we care how they're provisioned. That's why we're here and talking about that. So uh, our goal there was and is to help with bootstrapping of of this infrastructure and uh, providing a way of configuring the security for all those connections. So, and um, I pretty much talked to that slide. So we, um, we have tools and we have capabilities to 
um, configure every single system that needs to be configured uh, with the keys, with the identity, so that all these uh, connections uh, can be secured. And we actually did that with OpenShift. So we worked with the OpenShift guys, and uh, that was our pilot project where we decomposed uh, the whole infrastructure, identified some pieces, and created a way of, of adding, adding security and provided some guidelines. The, the work is not completely done. That was just phase one. There is a lot that needs to be done next, but at least we sort of uh, proved that that can be done. And then we started working with other projects like OpenStack also. Uh, very similar uh, activity is happening there. But to be able to deliver these keys and um, these certificates, the system that manages the services where the component is located needs to be uh, a part of the identity management ecosystem. So it is important that the underlying host is provisioned in the right way. Not only the infrastructure itself and the, the user payload, but like everything, whether it is on the cloud, over cloud, bare metal, the whole infrastructure needs to be uh, a part of the so-called domain. So um, next we will be talking about the automatic provisioning of systems with uh, identity and, and keys. So, um, as I mentioned, we need, we need to provide the identity to the system so that the identity can be given to the services running on, on that system. And uh, the solution is to provide a way to pre-register the system with the identity management and then when it is provisioned to uh, pass to the system a registration code, a OTP, so that the system can connect and complete the registration. So this is how it looks like on the diagram. So there is some kind of the orchestration server and it is different in different situations in different piece of software. It can be satellite, it can be OpenShift, it can be OpenStack, it can be Foreman. So it, it really doesn't matter. But the common theme is the orchestration system uh, as a, as a res in a response to some action, whether it is user action or just generated from, from external, uh, connects identity management system and says, okay, uh, system foo is going to be provisioned. So that's pre-registration at the bottom, the first step. The second step is that authentication management system a free IPA in this case, is going to record this and return a registration code or so-called OTP. This registration co code is then passed through the infrastructure and it is different in different cases. In, in Foreman it is one way, in OpenStack it is another way, and in Satellite it is the third way, but the general theme is that this registration code is passed back to the system being instantiated, and then this system calls a registration so that it can be, become a part of the domain. And then this registration code, this OTP, is used to authenticate this system to the server. And once that happens, the system has the identity, the system can securely talk to, to the central server because keys and certificates are provisioned for the system itself. And if the system is given privileges to manage the services that are going to run on top of that system, then it also can ask and provision keys and certificates and identity for the services running on top. So that's become next step and next iteration. So, uh, so, we talked about the two uh, parts, the internal security and provisioning. I, I deliberately set aside the authentication piece because it is the most complex and we will probably use the rest of the time talking about it. So um, 
and let's, let's dive into that. But before, any questions about provisioning and security, anything that, that we want to discuss before we dive into the authentication? Okay, so good. So the initial look didn't, well, the initial assessment uh, didn't look promising. So uh, in many projects, uh, there are a lot of different craft, there is a lot of different craft related to user management and authentication. But the common theme is that there is a local database, there is some implementation of the LDAP, very basic, uh, and uh, it's usually provided by the, by the framework that is used by the application, but nothing beyond, nothing uh, really complex there. And then the authentication just happens by prompting the user for username and password. So that, that's the common theme. And everybody says, well, we need to have a local database because for the developer stack, in, a, in, in the case you are developing the application, you really want to be able to use local identities and not rely on any uh, central server. So, well, it's a reasonable use case, but on the other hand, if you're always developing with just a local database and then you need to deploy in an enterprise environment, then it is a challenge because integration becomes um, very complex and um, there is usually uh, a lot of uncertainty about how exactly it needs to be done. And there is also, yeah, and I said that there is also no, no single sign-on. So there is no support for Kerberos, single sign-on, or SAML. Uh, there, there is work in some of the projects happening, but it's not complete. So uh, it's, it's a moving target, and we'll talk about, uh, about different things. But I, 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 want, I want to dive into the LDAP aspect. Uh, so people think that for the enterprise enablement of the application, just configuring LDAP would be enough. And LDAP is common interface and there are no dragons there. Well, when you look under the hood and start really thinking about the LDAP, yeah, you implemented the LDAP client and you can connect and you can do a, an LDAP search from your application, but you need to think about how you are connecting from your application to the central server. Are you connecting as application identity or you're connecting on behalf of the user? Uh, if you are connecting as an application identity, uh, is it okay from the security point of view to impersonate every single user because that's what the application actually doing. It's intercepting all the passwords and just acting on behalf of everybody. So maybe it is not, not a good idea, right? Uh, then how it stores the, its credential. It needs to have a credential to connect to the central server. So where is this credential? Well, it's good if it is some kind of non-readable credential, but usually it is just a password somewhere uh, on the file system and hope for the best that permissions on this file are uh, correct so that it is not world readable. So um, failover, directory servers have uh, multiple instances and replication, so uh, they can be with load balances, might not, so the application needs to know about different topology and or at least figure out from the DNS what are the LDAP servers that it needs to connect to and failover nicely. It also needs to, to know uh, what to do when the connection is broken and when it can't uh, get to the LDAP server, it shouldn't fall, fall back. So uh, is, it, is it capable of doing it? Well, in some cases it does because it has a local database, but it is not sort of plumbed together because it is a different backend. So uh, it becomes not that easy and also you can have in the modern environments in, uh, multiple different uh, LDAP sources. And what we see as we go forward uh, that um, Unix, Linux, part of the enterprise 
uh, exists more or less independently from the Windows side. So um, Linux side of, uh, of the enterprise picks uh, as a central solution an LDAP server or identity management system that serves their needs and serves the central identities, mostly administrators of those systems, into uh, the, the Linux infrastructure. That's exactly what we are talking about here. But most of other users are in the Active Directory. So how we are going to merge these two namespaces from the single application, and there is a lot of kind of, well, it's sort of not a use case that we want to support. Okay, but really, if you go into the modern enterprises, it's not only the two directories, it's multiple directories, and they might be in uh, different relationships. They can be syncing data, they can be in trust relationships. So uh, application, if it wants to uh, go the LDAP route, would need to be uh, capable of uh, implementing all these complexities. And also, different directory servers have different schema. Uh, for the user, it's probably mostly the same, but as soon as you start looking at some kind of access control, you need to have groups, and the groups are implemented differently in different places. So uh, there, the, the, there are standard LDAP, 2307, 2307Bs, they dif differ in, in group schema. Active Directory has a different schema. So someone somewhere needs to implement the logic of resolving that and unifying it. And again, it's, it has to be the same application. And I'm not even talking about the multi-tenancy which is coming, right? So you need to make sure that your application is more or less uh, multi-tenant ready because maybe the infrastructure will be offered as a service and then you would need to deal with the identities coming not only from the uh, LDAP servers but maybe from some other sources. So the point here is that just LDAP just doesn't fly. So Every single application needs to deal with all those complexities and it is not efficient. We can help there. We can provide a way of ease the pain for all the applications of implementing the direct LDAP based authentication and identity lookups. And to do the things right, uh, you really need to be an expert and we are experts in this area, and in some cases there is not enough expertise within those projects to even assess the complexity of the environment that they are getting into. So the idea that we wanted to position to pitch here is let's reuse what has been done. And what has been done is SSSD. SSSD was built to solve all the problems that I have mentioned in the previous slide for the platform. It can connect to multiple identity sources. It can cache information. It can uh, do a failover, reconnect, right? So all this, and, and it connects securely. It has the, the way of using Kerberos and so on. So all the problems that applications again and again trying to solve, already solve. So why not reuse it? So there are a couple challenges with that because SSSD on the platform level and web application sort of above. So that needs to be a bridging between, between the two technologies. That needs to be a way of exposing SSSD authentication and identity lookup capabilities to the application. And it needs to be in some generic way so that application has to do minimal amount of changes to implement this integration. That's the key point. We don't want to come to application and say, now you need to rewrite this piece and this piece and this piece. We want to be very simple. And we want to provide ways for quick integration. So the architecture looks like this. Application is running in some 
application framework, environment, whatever. There is Linux as a platform and uh, SSSD runs as a part of the platform. So SSSD is connected to some kind of identity source, where, whether it is Active Directory, Free APA, or Free APA in trust relationship, or maybe it is not connected to anything. Maybe SSSD is just on the developer's machine and it has a local storage for the user account. So uh, SSSD abstracts that all and you don't need to worry about uh, where the identities are coming from. So then we, what we suggest is to put Apache either in front or maybe application is already using Apache. So Apache can be in front of the application, passing information to the framework. And uh, that has been tried both with Java, with Eep, with Ruby applications, with Python applications. So it's all doable. So, and then inside the Apache, there are Apache modules that perform the authentication and identity lookups. So how that works? A request comes in for some URL, and if it is not, uh, if the user uh, is not authenticated, then uh, this request is intercepted, and a login page out of the application is presented. So user enters his username and password, and then one of the modules, the intercept module, will see username and password, and before returning anything to the application, it will talk to SSSD and perform local authentication through SSSD directly, through the PAM stack. So, and as a result of that, it will set environment variables, and then pass the, 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 the response to the application. So application can just look at whether the authentication has been conducted by the previous stack or not. If it is not configured, application will continue to work as is. And if the remote user is already set, then application can rely on the fact that the stack in front of it, of those, uh, of those Apache modules, already performed the authentication, already have done whatever it needs to be done there. Okay, so uh, if the user authenticated before with something else, for example, with Kerberos, there is another module that would uh, capture the fact that there is a Kerberos uh, ticket on the client side and request, th there, there will be a negotiation and that's the, the foundation of the single sign-on. So in this case, the user will be authenticated but we still need to check whether this user even allowed to access this application. So again, SSSD with a combination of, with free IPA can provide host-based access control and factor in this service. And application can be marked as a service in the configuration. So you can say on that machine, the Apache service running, I don't know, satellite service. So this user is not allowed to hit satellite service on this group of the machines. And then uh, it will be enforced by SSSD and all these policies will be managed centrally. So um, there, are, there is one more uh, important, well, there are other authentication methods. So you can authenticate with the certificates or you can authenticate with uh, an external identity provider. So, for example, uh, you come, you, you have two applications. You have a service provided, just an example, right? You, uh, you have a service provided by a third party. So, how the authentication happens um, in these cases. So, you have on the, your side a so-called identity provider so when a user hits a URL in the external service, the service redirects you to the identity provider server. An identity provider server uh, requests authentication. It can use your local Kerberos authentication or prompt you for something. And then it will, after you authenticate it, issue a SAML assertion 
that might have additional attributes inside this SAML assertion. And that would be uh, redirected to the, uh, to the external service. So the external service can look at this assertion, this SAML assertion, and uh, treat it as an authentication token, a proof of the authentication in the similar way as it is done with Kerber. So in this case, your application becomes a service provider. So what we see on, on, the, on the diagram, think about that. If you have multiple services within the enterprise and you want to single sign on between them, you can do the uh, the uh, Kerber single sign-on, or you can do an IDP in front of the infrastructure so that all authentication happens at one server, and then you just redirect it, and uh, the single sign-on happens uh, using SAML. It can happen using other uh, authentication methods like OpenID, OpenID Connect. So uh, we started uh, not only building this stack, but we started building the, this gateway, this IDP, that is very focused on single sign-on between the applications that provide the infrastructure management. Because it is the inside the enterprise namespace, and we, we are not building the generic IDP. The generic IDP is available from the JBoss EIP. Uh, we are focusing on the specific IDP provider for the inside the enterprise infrastructure. And what is good about it is that the IDPs can chain to each other. So uh, if you have different namespaces uh, inside the enterprise, one is more infrastructure level and another is more uh, consumer, customer, partner, whatever level, then you can uh, 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 enable users who are inside the enterprise to access the same services as the user that can access the services fro from external. So uh, let's move forward a little bit. So I, I described the workflow. I talked about the remote user. One other thing that is worth mentioning in this setup is sometimes applications <coughs> need more than just a user. They need a um, badge number or mail address or a uh, list of group memberships or some other arbitrarily attribute related to the user. So uh, we uh, provided a way to uh, fetch this additional information out of the SSSD. So uh, SSSD can be configured to fetch additional attributes from the central directory and give it to the application through the special module mod identity lookup. And as a result, everything about the authenticated user coming in is in the environment variables. And for the application to integrate with that is read the environment variables and either create a user session object or stick it to the session object or stick it into your cache database, whatever. You don't need to worry about all the properties of this user anymore for the lifetime of the session. You don't need to go back to the LDAP and look up anything. So um, I talk about modules. There are the, the details that we can read if, if you are interested. So, um, but there are, there are some complications. It would have been perfect if we could have said, okay, the user uh, authenticated and all his properties are taken care of, so boom, you don't need to, care, uh, to worry about the LDAP connection anymore. Well, unfortunately, it is not the case. Unfortunately, there is a complication related to the administrative workflows. So let's say that the user who authenticated and we have all information about him, but he needs to manage other users or other groups. So within the application. So he needs to have a way of fetching additional information so that he can assign roles, permissions, things like that. So uh, what, what is the solution here? Should we tell the application, yeah, for this case, you'd go LDAP? Well, it doesn't really fly because the, the complications are, are still there. So 
there is no much benefit. The biggest benefit if we can say, well, there is no LDAP connection anymore, you don't need to worry about it. So to solve that problem, we decided to extend SSSD a little bit more and provide DBUS interface to expose additional information. And additional information related to the administrative workflows like list sub subset of users, list subset of groups, list domains, things like that. So uh, over DBUS interface, we provide an API that uh, is uh, that can be consumed by the application directly in the administrative workflows. And then it is really the case that the application doesn't need to go to LDAP anymore. What is nice about this DBUS interface, <coughs> excuse me, is that it is reusable for other things. During this week, we have been talking to different projects, uh, not only related to the stack, but on, on the um, side of the platform. It's like wh what is also in there. And we see a lot of potential for this interface to become a way of providing centralized identity information to applications running inside Linux desktop. So we see a, a big potential to push some policies, to provide some uh, information about user profile, user preferences, and so on. So uh, it seems that the architecture that we uh, chose and promote and suggest you to uh, work with us on uh, is uh, proving to be reusable not only for the stacks and the infrastructure, but also for other, other use cases and uh, management of the Linux system, uh, both uh, desktop and, and w without UI. So to summarize, the benefits of going the SSSD route is that you don't need to worry about LDAP anymore. And you can deploy the application the same way. You don't need to change anything, and you don't need to run and prepare multiple different test setups. You need to test the integration with SSSD, and then you can use it in the development environment, in the demo environment, in the POC environment, or in the production environment. It's the same configuration, same bits, it's just what changes is the connection between SSSD and the central server. So that's very powerful. So what are next steps? Next steps are read the integration guide if you are interested in integrating your application with this stack. We are working with all the projects that I mentioned on the slide in the middle uh, to enable them. We are doing it one step at a time. So if you are interested in moving this uh, effort forward and contributing, that's the way to go. And then uh, we are very interested in feedback. Maybe we missed something. Maybe there are some use cases that we need to take into the account that we are currently not taking into the account. And that's pretty much it. So these are the references to the projects, to FreeAP and SSSD. If you are interested to uh, connect and, and uh, work with us, please, that's all open source, as you know. And questions? Yes. Yes, so uh, the plan is to have bindings because applications are written in Python, Java, Ruby. So we would have to provide those bindings. I think Dbus already has some bindings, but we might provide a, a logical abstraction on top of that. So using Dbus right away with what is in there might be the first step, but at some point we will provide a Python class and Ruby Jam, a Java class to make it much easier. So the interface is being defined right now, and uh, if you are interested, three rows be behind you is the person to talk to. Yakov. Any other, yes.
So uh, Java EAP applications can be front-ended by Apache. So I talked explicitly to EAP architects and presented this slide deck to them. And we worked through, and there is a configuration and recommendation of how to run Apache in front of EAP. So it is doable. So any other questions? Uh, so, not exactly. First, you log in somewhere with your username and password or other credential to prove who you are. And as a result of that, you get uh, some kind of token that defines the proof of your authentication. And then when you access a specific s service, then your client software uh, knows to get a specific proof of authentication for that specific service. So behind the scenes, on your behalf, the client will take the proof of the authentication, connect the central server and say, okay, user is accessing service A, I need a proof of the authentication that I can present to service A. And then the server will issue a specific proof of the authentication that will be given to service A. So then the client redirects to service A and the authentication happens automatically, but there is access control that enforces whether this user can access this, uh, this uh, service or not. So single sign-on defines the capability to authenticate once and present the proof of the authentication multiple times, but it is a subject to active test. So uh, the state of the Apache modules that I mentioned uh, is that they are being in review for Fedora packaging. So they are in the stage of being integrated with real projects. And as a first stage, they are being integrated in Fedora. SSSD is a part of Fedora for many years and a part of Red Hat Enterprise and a, a pretty much every distribution. So the only piece that is not complete is the dbus interface so that is being actively worked on but the goal is during this spring the spring to sort of have this solution so later this year we want to have real integrations working in production environment based on that integration yes and that's it thank you very much Do you want PDF or ODP? Uh, sure, because I was thinking of um, because PDF would be probably better. 